I brought this Queen Anne dressing table second hand for $30. As you can see, there are many little knocks and chips in the woodwork throughout, and the table looks like it's been painted many times. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the hardware from all the drawers. Then using a wood filler, I fill in all the holes on the drawers. I prefer to use my finger as the drawers are slightly curved and I can push more into it. I give the table a really quick wipe before I use the paint stripper. I don't usually use this chemical, however there looks to be quite a thick layer of paint on top and I don't want to spend forever sanding back paint. So make sure you follow the instructions and use gloves. After letting the paint stripper sit for 30 minutes or so, I scraped off the first layer of paint using a paint scraper. Plastic or metal, they both worked really well. I used steel wool to get to the curved edges. Just double glove so you don't rip through and expose your skin to the paint stripper. After removing the first coat, reapply a second coat of paint stripper. And now we wait another half an hour. Remove the paint stripper and wipe down thoroughly, ready for sanding. Now it's time to sand off this old paint. I start with a 60 grit sandpaper. Once all the paint is gone, I continue sanding, but I change my grit, moving up in numbers until I get to the final stage, using a 240 grit sandpaper for a nice smooth finish. Now the painful part of the entire project, sanding of the edges. There are curves and lines in this edge and it takes quite some time to sand them all back properly. Take your time and don't rush it. It is far better to spend the time here to make sure that you get a good result than get to the end and wish you had to spend more time on it.
Now lightly sand the rest of the table. This allows for the paint to stick well to the surface and it also smooths out any paint chip edges. I'm applying wood filler to any of the little dents and chips and any little cracks that I can see. I'll come back later and sand this. While the wood filler is drying, I sand back the drawers. I'm using my hands to feel for any imperfections that I might have missed visually. Now I'm getting ready to paint my first coat. I spent a little bit of time here putting some tape on my project because I want to make sure that my paint doesn't bleed under the tape. I'm using a chalk paint in a navy blue colour, however when I purchased this paint it was very dark, it almost came out looking black. So I added a little bit of grey and a little bit of white to lighten it up a little bit for the colour that I wanted. I applied two coats and used the paint very sparingly so as not to leave brush strokes in the paintwork. A little goes a long way with this type of paint. I tape up the drawers and I set the tape on the side of the drawer about an inch from the front. I don't want to paint the whole side of the drawer because when you paint the full side of the drawer, it sticks to the inside of the cavity. So it's only good to paint just a little bit so that if the drawer is hanging out maybe an inch, you can still see the colour. Once the paint has dried, I used a spray-on clear coat and I used a piece of off-cut to protect my top from overspray. I applied two coats, ensuring adequate drying time between each coat. 
This is important because if you rush this process, your top coat will crackle. I removed the painter's tape and I set the drawers aside for a little longer to dry before I painted the internal drawers with an enamel paint. I use this because I feel it's easier to wipe the internal drawers out afterwards. I measured and pre-drilled holes for my hardware in the front of all my drawers. The finished product, I'm so in love with this piece and the gold bee handles were perfect against the navy blue and the raw timber top. I did use beeswax for the timber top and I sold this piece for $280 after the long hours spent getting it perfect.